Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Amma ba'du We've reached the hadith regarding Hukmu qada'i Al-sawmi Al-wajibi An al-mayyit the, re- the ruling, the hukum of qada of making up a saum, al-wajib, the obligatory fast, making up the obligatory fast on al mayyit for the dead person or on behalf of the dead person. Hadith al-thalith, which is own by the 193rd hadith. We have a brother Khalil with us. Um, عائشة رضي الله أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أن ما أن مات وعليه سيام سيام سام أنه ولي وليه نعم عن عائشة رضي الله عنها on the authority of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa called that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man mata wa alayhi siyam. Um, on the authority of Aisha, uh, um, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, the, the dead? Man mata, here's a verb. Whoever died. So whoever died. Uh, and he, uh, and he, uh, yeah, uh, there's fast. Alayhi, there's a fast upon him, meaning do from him, right? Do for him. Sama, uh, Sama. Sama is a verb. He fasts. Yeah, he fasts. And who? He fasts. On his behalf. On his behalf. Waliyuhu. Wali. What is Wali? Uh, protector or his, his, guardian, his guardian. The one who's taking charge of his affairs, right? So when someone dies, we have someone in charge of their affairs. Could be the oldest son, could be the brother, could be whoever it is, right? Whoever takes the charge to gather his belongings and sell them off, pay off his debts, collect his debts, distribute the wealth. This person who's going to be in charge, Sama Anhu. He's going to fast on his behalf, right? Men matter, whoever passed away, and he had some fasting upon him, meaning do from him. Sama anhu wali yuhu. Wali yuhu. Wali is where you see the dhamma on the ya. It's the file. It's the doer of the verb. His, his wali will fast on his behalf. Tayyip. You want to try to read these, or you want me to read them with you, for you, or with you? Uh, for me, please. Min fawadi wa hakam al hadith. No problem. From the virtues and the, I say virtues and benefits because sometimes fawaid or faida means virtue, and sometimes it means benefit. Right? Wa hakam al hadith and the rulings of the hadith. Oh well, and firstly, uh, amr al amr al qarib. Biqadai Sawm al Wajib ala Qaribihi or Umira. It should be Umira Asif. Umira al Qarib. Biqadai Sawmi al Wajibi ala Qaribihi. That the Qarib, the relative, the close relative, has been commanded to make up the obligatory fast for his relative. Right? For his relative. In the matter, if he passes away, qabla itmam siyam. Before completing the fast, in the matter, qabla itmam siyam. If he passes away before making up or completing those fasts, so he has some fast that's obligatory upon him, right? And he's going to go through this, and if if he doesn't mention everything, then we'll mention some of it. So, umira al qaribu bi qada al al wajib. The relative is commanded to make up the obligatory fast ala qaribihi on behalf of his relative idha mata qabla itmam as-siyam. He passes away before completing the fast. 
وإذا لم يصم وإذا لم يصم القريب right عن الميت عن الميت and if he doesn't if the relative does not fast on behalf of the dead person فإنه then indeed he يطعم عنه من تركته then he feeds on his behalf من from تركته تركة is what he left behind like the word taraka to abandon or to leave something so taraka with a tamarbuta means his belongings or his wealth that he left behind and the ha here refers back to the mayit right taraka tihi li kulli yawmin miskin so he feeds for every day a feed a poor person right a poor person fa in lam yakun Lahu tarika. So if there is no tarika for this dead person, mean he didn't leave anything behind. He has nothing to pay for. I'm in, I'm in charge. I'm his wali, and I'm not willing to fast on his behalf. Right? And he didn't leave anything behind in which I could feed a poor person for every day that he owes. What happens then? When lam yakul lahu tarika, he doesn't have any wealth left behind. What tabarra'a. Ahadun Tabarra'a Put a sukun on the ra Tabarra'a From Ba-ra'ain Right? Mean to To donate Basically Right? Mutabarra'at uh, Are those donations Right? Tabarra'a Ahadun bil it'ami Anhu And someone donates Right, someone donates the feeding on his behalf, meaning I'm 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 stingy. I don't want to fast on his behalf. He didn't leave anything behind to pay for a poor person. So, brother Khalil comes along and says, "I'll pay for it." Right, I'll pay for it. And I'll feed the poor person on his behalf, even though I'm not his wali, even though I'm not his relative. I don't even know him, but I heard about his case. What happens? Ajza. This is permissible. Right, this is permissible. It counts. Ajza here means it's rewarded, like jazakallah khairan here. But ajza means it's rewarded, meaning it will be counted. Right, it will be considered and taken into account. Right, wa in lam yatabarra, wa in lam yatabarra with the sukun on the ayin at barra because of the lamb. Wa in lam yatabarra ahadun anhu, and if no one Donates on his behalf for Amruhu illallahi ta'ala. Then his case, his matter is with Allah as a wajah. If he wants, he can punish him for not making up, you know, or if he wants, he can have mercy upon him. You got that? That may be the hardest paragraph we took so far, right? Thanian. إذا تعدد الأولى إذا تعدد تعدد or تعدد with a dumb or a dumb on the dial when it becomes a noun here it's a verb then تعدد is to have numeral right that's what they call having more than one wife right he has تعدد or something along those lines right تعدد talking about more than one so إذا تعدد الأولى so if there's more than one wali, he has four sons, and they're all taking care of his, they're all working together to take care of his affairs. Samu jami'an, samu, they fast jami'an, all of them fast. Hatta yunhu ma al mayit Until they complete or finish what is due upon the dead person. So if he owes four days and there's four of us, we all fast one day each. Get it done quicker. All right? It was 20 days. We each take five and we get done quicker. All right? Yun Ho. To end from Nihaya, like the word Nihaya. Al Bidai with Nihaya, Ibn Kathir, the beginning and the end. 
books, right? The book, the beginning and the end, because he talks about from the time of Adam until the day of judgment, right? Nihaya, Yunhu, until they complete or finish Ma al what is upon the dead person. Thalithan, and al Kariba, la yakdi soma tatawa'i, or soma tatawa'a, and mayitihi. Right, that the relative layakdi he doesn't make up so much. It should be a, a kasra. I'm sorry because of how they wrote it. I was thinking it was uh, an adjective here, but it's not so because it's mafulam bihi layakdi. What he doesn't make up the fast at the the voluntary fast an meyitihi. So if a person has voluntary fast, he doesn't make them up. He usually fasts Mondays and Thursdays, and he was. It was it was Monday and he didn't fast because he died. I'm gonna make up that. No, he doesn't have to make that up, right? He doesn't have to make that up. He only makes up the obligatory fast. And if he dies in Ramadan on the 15th of Ramadan, he doesn't have to make up them 15 days to the end of Ramadan because he didn't live during those days. Those days were never obligatory for him. But if he had to make up a day of Ramadan, or if he made another that. I'm going to fast three days if my son gets healthy. And then his son gets healthy. So now he owes three days, but he dies before he does those three days. Then those are the days that are made up. Right? But not if he dies in before Ramadan. So therefore, I have to make up this Ramadan for him. No, you don't have to make it. He, this Ramadan never became obligatory. He died before. Or he died halfway through. So the other half was never obligatory upon him. Only those days which are obligatory. Those days he had to make up or... From an oath or a vow that he made, right? Go ahead. Um, so, if you have family, is it good to tell them um, if you have a past? Wallahi, yes. We should be. We should know one another. Wallahi, if we died right now, if we for us four died right now, and you were alive, and you were in charge of burying us, who you put in the grave first? So, so who are you gonna put in the grave first? Oh, we all died. Yeah, because you don't know who knows the most Quran. You see what I'm saying? We don't know each other like that. We're so we keep our lives to ourselves, and that's not how the Sahaba were. You see what I'm saying? They knew who knew Quran amongst them, and who knew these. Who, he 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 don't know the most Quran, but he knows the most ahkam of of what's halal and haram. You see what I'm saying? And he knows this, and he we they knew about each other. They knew things. You see what I'm saying? So so. We're speaking about the about the wali. Is it usually a family relative? Because the wali here translates maybe to English as an executor. Yeah, executor. But it's, it's probably usually the family member. But if, even if it's not the family member, whoever takes on that responsibility, mm. then it should be. But it's usually the family <coughs> member that would take it on. In the West, we have an executor exactly. because we keep family out of it. But we keep family out of it. Why? Because we don't have rules. You see what I'm saying? We don't have rules. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we have rules. So when I die... Unless I bequeath something to someone, it's I got a wife and a son. It's known who gets what. Even if I had five, four wives and five sons and six daughters, Allah told us who gets what. You see what I'm saying? So there is no fight. There is no infighting. Now, one of my sons or daughters or wives could fight and lie and sneak and hide and do something, but that's on them on their judgment. That's not going to benefit anyway because they snuck and hid it. You see what I'm saying? But what's available is known. So we don't need an executor in Islam, like outside, to keep the family from fighting. Follow-up question. Um, so should this be in a will? Like, Should these things be noted in a will? If you if you have them, you should put them in a will. If yeah. you owe something, you should know. Like just the same way, and, and we'll get to that, similar to that in a minute here, because so. we're going to talk about qada again, of making up for a person. <laughs> but similar to if you owe someone some money, you should write it in a will so that they know to take it out of what you leave behind. Or if someone owes you, then they can know to go collect that so that they can distribute it amongst the people. Even if it's to due in two years, mm -hmm. you passed away. Okay, well, he owes 10000 two years from now. Then 10000 comes in two years from now. Then we take that and divide it up, up amongst mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Would be permissible to state instructions be like, please use my estate to. Yeah, we well, have to. A lot says what to do. If you owe, Allah tells you that from from uh, uh, 
uh, what's it say? Uh, it says it numerous times, but it says from whatever you bequeath or you have a debt. And it, it's an issue because he means he mentions bequeathings before debts. But all of the Sahaba who made tafsir said the debt is to be paid before any bequeathing because debts have more right. You see what I'm saying? Even though Allah mentions the bequeathing, right? So, yes, the, it, it, some of these things we don't have to mention because they're automatically in the Sharia. Alhamdulillah, Islam is beautiful. Thank you.